One thing I need to clear up from some of the feedback that I received from my original video on this topic is some confusion of what surges are. They occur from the switching of electrical loads, magnetic and inductive coupling, static electricity, and one characteristic of all these are these are actually voltage surges. So I've kind of started calling this project suppression of voltage transients rather than surge suppression. There are current surges as well. For example, when you start a motor, a motor can draw a lot of energy as it starts up. Well, that can drop the voltage because in an inrush of current, the voltage can go down. So these voltage transient protectors, like the TVS diodes I'm using, will do nothing on a low voltage situation. However, when that motor starts, not only is there a voltage drop due to the inrush of current, but there can also be some spiking, voltage spiking, from the closing of contacts, those kind of things, sparking basically, and that's where the TVS comes in. So again, the TVS diodes are used to limit voltage spikes, and they do nothing to prevent low voltage from an inrush of current. So hopefully that kind of clears this up. Now I didn't notice this when I did the first video, but it's significant enough that I'd like to mention it here. Some of you may have one of these convenience centers in your RV that does the black tank, gray tank levels. When I take the board out, lo and behold, what do you think that is? That's an MOV protector. So even these semi-worthless tank monitors, some of them have MOV protectors in them. Are you convinced yet? And one thing we should look at when determining where to put our surge suppressors is how lightning works. So here's kind of a simplified little diagram that let's say we have a nearby lightning strike an electromagnetic field is basically generated and through magnetism it can couple current into the telephone wires as we see here. And even if one side was grounded it could still induce some voltages on the ungrounded side. It's very important to understand that telephone lines act somewhat like an antenna to lightning. Here's a picture of a typical RV and let's say we have a backup camera at the rear and it is fed by the distribution panel near the front. The wiring in the ceiling is no different than the power lines in the last example and can act as an antenna. So the best place to locate the transient voltage suppressor is going to be right here, right, right with the camera because that will suppress any voltages that are induced along these lines. But sometimes you cannot access this location, so the alternate location, although not quite as good, would be here. And of course this is going to be much better than not having one. And in this example I'm using a RV puck light, four and a half inch puck light, and I'm just wiring this inline surge suppressor. And I'm also planning on using one of these suppressors for my backup camera just wire it in line with the camera and if I wire it at the camera then I'm behind the switch so it'll shut off when I shut the camera off. And in this example I retrofitted my Cylon Eye with one of the dual diode suppressors. One diode goes to the 5 volts supply voltage and the other line goes to the data line and that is how I prevented the Cylon Eye from continuously burning out. And I should stress that the LED here is optional. And in fact, if I were going to use one of these for the Cylon Eye, I would probably leave the LED off and then I don't have to worry about which side is the data line and which side is the supply line. And of course, if you have a control panel like this in your RV, on the back side you can hook uh, one of these surge suppressors up to each one of the switches and that would help protect it as well. With the caveat that this is not the most desirable place to install the protector, the protector should be installed at the device if it can be. The LED here on this inlet lasted about six months before it went bad, so I bet a TVS diode would help that. But really, how effective are these voltage transient diodes going to be anyway? I mean, if you put them in your RV and nothing happens, are they doing their job by protecting your system? I mean, how can you measure a non-event? I guess the only thing that you can go by is it can't hurt.